Well, after almost a century, we finally have it. Video of socialism arriving in a country. We'll show you that video now. And in this video, the socialism will be the white car, which is owned by the state of uh, Venezuela. And the people, of course, are just the people. So roll the footage and here comes socialism. En las imágenes que tenemos presentes, híjole, vamos a, a, son imágenes que tenemos ahora. And I wish I was joking, and I wish it was funny, but it's not. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. This is a story that is developing as we record this. Uh, the Maduro government is is fighting for its miserable, uh, soulless right to take away people's everything, including their right to live. Uh, and as we go on uh, with this, there's an actual apparent sort of a coup uprising where people have said, you know, we've had enough socialism for one generation here, I think. I think enough people have died. In the time it's taken us to record our, our Right Angle shows uh, this morning, we found from when I first saw the story to what we heard just a moment ago that something like 40 or 50 people have been killed by the Maduro government. I suspect that number is going to get higher. All of these, uh, all of these socialist dictatorships collapse the same way, and we're going to watch it again. And that's not what's interesting to me. I have enormous sympathy for these people. What I simply cannot tolerate or understand is how people can still be talking about selling this idea in America today. Um, Scott, let's start with you. Uh, hey, socialism is great because it's kind to people. You would have thought that when they took away all your stuff, that would start to give you a hint. But taking away all your stuff didn't do it. Then they took away all your food and People were eating animals at the zoo and eating their own pets and so on, and that didn't do it. And as I saw in a meme uh, just yesterday, by weird coincidence, uh, it's pretty much how it always goes, right? Socialism. You can vote your way in, but you're going to have to shoot your way out. You know, the, the smallest unit of government beyond the individual is the family. And mm -hmm. I have found in my experience as a father that I don't even make good governance decisions on a reliable basis in this very small political unit that we call a family. Guilty. Um, God forbid that I had more power. Uh, God forbid that I had the ability to uh, strip people of their freedom or their livelihood or channel their money into my coffers. Um, you know, I enjoyed that for a few years, but then the kids moved out. And, you know, this is, I think, what our friends on the left don't fully grasp, because I know they're all waking up to this news too. And by waking up, I mean it started to really break around noon. So that's about when they wake up. And they are watching this news and seeing the horrible things happening in Venezuela. Not a one of them is thinking, wow, this is the natural consequence of socialism. They are, they're not thinking that if you head down that path, it becomes a slippery slope that eventually results in armored personnel carriers running over unarmed civilians. 200 that million it, people that it, dead. That it results in 200 million people dead, that it results in people eating the animals at the zoo and their own household pets. Nobody thinks that because what it is, and we've talked about this in a previous uh, episode, it is a form of nationalistic racism to believe that somehow, because we're the United States of America, we'll do socialism right. We think that we have the, the utopian recipe for it that we can pull off, but those pigs in Venezuela, they don't know how to do it. Right, and those right, right. losers in China, exactly. they can't do it. And those terrible commies in Russia, they can't do it. But if we did it, if you just gave us that power for a short period of time, and, and I guess more than anything, this is kind of a plea to my friends on the left to say, okay, I know you don't believe that, but, but what if that's the case? Let's just, just, can you do that little thought experiment for yourself? What if it's the case that these aren't aberrations, that the fact that every socialist regime ever formed eventually slides into totalitarianism and slaughter? What if that's real? Can you, can you do a little historical research just to check it out for yourself? Because you love your family, you love your neighbors, you love the people you work with, and you would hate to see them being run over by an armored personnel carrier. Yeah, and uh, this is one of the mildest forms of uh, social socialist governance uh, that are available to anybody who, who chooses to read a little bit of history. Um, you know, I want to pick up the, what, what you just said there, Scott, because you're absolutely right. The constant, constant, constant thing we're told is, well, that's not real socialism. That's not real socialism. That's not real socialism. 
you actually sometimes just want to ask these people that believe in this um, organized murder and, and theft, how many chances do you think is reasonable to give it? In other words, if this idea is just an idea that's not been implemented in the 15 times it's been tried and it's always ended in catastrophe, what is a reasonable number of tries to give this theory before you begin to realize that maybe it doesn't work? You know, maybe it doesn't work. Um, I, I'm, I'm simply astonished that they are going to be running in a year in the United States of America. A very large portion of the Democratic Party is going to be pushing very hard for this, Steve. And this is the thing I'd like to talk to you about, Steve, because I don't understand how you can ignore these things. I don't understand how how you can continuously i can understand how a millennial who knows nothing about anything could be told that this is what happened in soviet union or, or nazi germany i should say national socialist germany and this happened in china that this happened in cuba i can see it oh they didn't see any of this happen this is going on right in front of their eyes in hd you know shot with gopro cameras and it's real so it's only real because they actually saw it with their own eyes how do you how do you how do you justify this if you, if if this is the country that has the the the, the most, um, it's got the largest oil reserves in the Western Hemisphere. I mean, it was once the fourth most uh, free economy in the world. Yeah. And they threw it all away on a pipe dream uh, for the people and the pursuit of raw, naked political power for uh, Hugo Chavez and the rest of the Chavistas who who have robbed the country blind. Uh, there's a really telling detail. We, we all read about the uh, the huge blackouts the country suffered in March and April. What didn't get uh, nearly as much publicity are these uh, the, the follow-on effects, the trickle-down effects of you. <laughs> it's trickle-down socialism. Uh, farmers don't have power to reliably irrigate their fields. Okay, We have a real crisis brewing because when the crops are supposed to be coming up, they might not be. So when uh, I think it was, uh, I, I just saw this headline. Let me see if I can dig this up again. It was, it was a great line. It was from one of the breaking news items. You just forgive me while I, I look this up. Um, oh, this is good. Ambassador John Bolton, our UN ambassador, said this is clearly not a coup. So let's let's stop using that word. Uh, John Guido as legitimate interim president of Venezuela. Um, it's not a coup for him to try and take command of the Venezuelan military. That's according to our it's own It's an anti-coup kick-ass. is what yeah, it is. Exactly. Um, and Venezuelans at the Colombian border, and you know, Venezuela has lost something like 10 or 12% of its population in recent years, people fleeing this socialist paradise. Uh, Venezuelans at the Colombia border clamoring to return to this hellhole, saying we will have a new president or we'll have a martyr. So the people are finally getting a chance to, to speak again after years of the Chavista regime. And I, I kind of like what some of them are, are saying. And uh, God bless them. And I hope we've got a new president rather than a martyr. But uh, for here at home, you know, we've got the usual combination of dupes who think they can vote themselves pros- other people's prosperity and that the other people's money will never run out. And you've got naked political climbers like Bernie Sanders who, you know, they'll end up with the, uh, he, with, with the nice dodge out in the woods. Uh, everybody else, of course, ends up getting screwed. What we need to do, though, is talk about uh, terms, because uh, they say, oh, no, what we want isn't socialism, socialism. We want democratic socialism. Socialism is what they tried down in Venezuela, where the government owns the means of production and all the rest and, and pisses everything away. What they seem to think by democratic socialism is if the people vote for it, then it's okay. Uh, and they always point to uh, the Scandinavian countries as examples of this. But there are a couple of reasons why it works there and wouldn't work there, or or here, I should say. Uh, One reason is uh, these things tend to work better when you have an homogenous population of people who basically think alike and agree on most things. Spreading the wealth around doesn't seem to bother them that much. The other thing is, uh, if you look at... Oh, and by the way, I should add that this is breaking down in Sweden as they import... More, more Muslims Absolutely. into the country. Absolutely, the, the the social contract is breaking down because we're no longer all alike. We're no longer all in this together. And this is a huge, diverse nation. You can't make work for 320 million people of who have just are just wildly different from coast to coast. Is one of my favorite things about this country. You can't make that model work here. And the other part they don't talk about 
is when it comes to regulation, the Scandinavian countries have a hugely lighter touch than Washington does or states like New York and California. It is much easier to start a business in one of these countries. It is much easier to be an entrepreneur. It is much easier to compete against the bigs. And, and we have lost that here. So if we want to have a talk about radically increasing the size of the welfare state because it's what the people want, all right, maybe we need to have that conversation. But as a part of that conversation, we need to say, listen, if we're going to have to pay all these taxes and redistribute all this wealth, you're going to have to make it easier for us to make wealth. And that means getting Washington out of the damn way. For those of you out there who either still believe in this socialist idea or you know somebody who believes in this socialist idea, here's my challenge to you. We're going to run this loop a little bit. I want you to pay close attention to this. You see the car that's running over people. What you see as a collectivist is you see a car running over people. What we see, American conservatives see, is we see a car running over individual people. Those aren't props and those aren't special effects. Every single one of the people that are being run, run over intentionally by the state government determined to hold on to power is as real as you are. They have as many different goals and dreams and ambitions as you do. You are not the only person in the world who has actual feelings, and this is not a laboratory where you get to make a decision about, well, they didn't do it right. Actual people, more real than you, in my opinion, are dying like they've been dying for the last 120 years of this, of this murderous experiment that's driven by one thing and one thing only. It's driven by envy and, 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 and a form of greed. It is driven by, I'm speaking to the socialist wannabes out there, it's driven by your desire to want to have things without working for things. You want somebody else's wealth redistributed to you. I know you're not really socialist because I've challenged you many times in person to distribute some of your wealth to people who are in greater need than you, but you won't do it. So it's all a gigantic form of envy and people are getting killed and you want to know why why we're fighting this and you want to know why we're keeping our guns you want to know why you want to know why we resist having our guns taken by the state and what do you need an ar-15 for what do you need an assault rifle for i need an assault rifle because i don't want to have a situation where i no longer have any money i no longer have any food my children are starving and i can't do anything and i can't appeal to the government because it's the government that's starving my children to death that's why I need this AR-15. I need my AR-15 to defend my family and myself from you. From you. From those of you out there, call yourself socialists, you big Bernie supporters who want to take other people's stuff and distribute it to yourself. You don't want to work for it. I have these weapons to protect myself from you. From you. This is the inevitable outcome of making a state powerful enough to take away from people what they have earned with their own hands. This is what you get. And it's not a question of not doing it right or doing it right or not doing it right. This is collectivism and collectivism eats its own. So the final thing I will leave you with, young socialists, is this. You talk an awful lot about how a CEO of a corporation may make $20 million in a year and how awful that is, $20 million in a year. Well, that's 40 times or 2,000 times what the office people work. How horrible is capitalism? This guy makes $5 million or $20 million a year because he runs a company that provides goods and services to people who voluntarily buy them on their own and provides value for them in exchange since there's no gunfire involved. But you miserable suckers need to know that when he died, Fidel Castro had $900 million in his personal bank account while his people starved to death. Hugo Chavez, who brought this wonderful sharing idea to Venezuela and is responsible for all of this murder and mayhem, his daughter, he's not with us anymore, his daughter has $4.3 billion in her personal bank bank account. She has $4,300 million in her bank account, and she hasn't done anything for anybody except to be born by uh, the daughter of, of one of these socialist dictators. And Bernie Sanders, who says that we have too many choices of deodorant, owns three houses. He owns three houses. He's telling you that rich people who own three houses are evil 
and he owns three houses, how many times do you have to be hoodwinked before you see this for what it is? It is a con game that is played upon your best instincts in order to take money for people who have no ethics, no values, no worries about life at all. They don't give a damn about anything. That's why they're the workers. We don't have workers in America. We have citizens. We have individual people who have individual lives. And so help me, God, if you think we are going to sit still for this in this country, you got another thing coming. You can make all the noise you want to, but we have weapons to protect ourselves from you doing this to us. Understand? Okay, good. Glad we got that straightened out. If you're such a big fan of socialism, you are more than welcome to go and live with it anywhere you want to in the world, because the only people who talk about how great socialism is, is people who live in capitalist countries. People who've lived in socialist countries yeah. want to be capitalists in the biggest possible way, and no one ever got shot going over the Berlin Wall trying to escape into East Germany, and no one ever drowned with their entire family trying to get a raft down to Cuba so they could get the free health care. Never happened. Not once. You miserable low-life murderers, you really should be ashamed of yourself. As for the rest of you, yet another example. Now we can add another four million people to this toll until the insanity of the people that cannot see this finally is either broken or, they, or they're put in a, in a mental institution where they belong. That'll do it for this edition of Right Angle, brought to you by the paying members of BillWhittle.com. These are volunteer citizen producers who voluntarily part with some of their hard-earned money in order to get this message out here, despite the fact that YouTube and Facebook do everything they can to make sure that we don't get paid for the ad revenues and also to make sure that the message doesn't get spread. So if you want to spread the message, please take the link below, touch the little bell so you get a notice. That's what you were supposed to do when you subscribed anyway, but do all of these things and for God's sakes, get the word out and small groups of people, small groups of individual people using their own decisions and their own money can change the world. And we need your help because there are billions of dollars out there driving this murder machine. And I'm getting goddamn tired of watching people die for this miserable, 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 disgraceful idea. And I'm not going to let it happen here. You're not either. We'll see you next week on Right Angle.